The year 2020 has no doubt been one of the worst times on record. With everything that has gone on in this world, I think everybody can agree spirits are not at their most happy or highest. But one good thing, one awesome thing that has come out of 2020 has been all the great music, both in death metal and other genres of alike, that have helped all of us get through these times. And today I'm super excited to be talking about one of the best 2020 releases in the death metal scene. This is Stygian by the band Atramentis. Atramentis is a funeral doom band from Quebec, Canada, and this is fronted by Phil Tugas, who's become a very famous name in the death metal scene. And if he puts his name on a project, you know it's going to be something good. His level of quality throughout other bands like Cathaliast and Cosmic Atrophy has just really sealed the deal and me thinking very highly of him as a composer and as a musician. And with what he does here on Stygian, it definitely shows very highly his songwriting capabilities. And this is Stygian's first release. To my knowledge, they don't have any demos or anything out. They just came right away with a full length. And what a way to introduce themselves to the world because this really goes beyond Funeral Doom. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, this is a half fairy tale narrative and half Funeral Doom album. The first thing on this insert is a four paragraph introduction that sets up the fairy tale to this story. And you got this Lord of the Rings style um, uh, land map, which is super cool. And, you know, like I'm saying, this thing really is incredible because it just tells a mad tale of a knight in search for this sword um, that belongs to the sun god. And it's a sword that grants the user full immortality. And a bunch of people have tried to take the sword, but everyone has failed except one man, the guardian of Atros, Karn. And he takes the sword and is tricked by some of the other gods because they hate the sun god. And they trick him into getting the sword. And when he gets the sword, he is condemned to wander the frozen plains forever as he realized immortality is not a gift, but a curse. And he watches everyone he ever loves die while he has to wander the frozen plains eternally. So it is a very powerful, very, very emotional narrative. And I know Phil Tugas did the story in the liner notes and these liner notes and sentences themselves are just an absolute work of art. It feels like you're reading gothic medieval literature, the Brothers Grimm style stuff, rather than Funeral Doom liner notes. I mean, I'll read one of the sentences. Uh, this is about the sword. Weeping crystal blood tears into the azure, the blade gleamed with rubic red shade and sang to it, Sister Earth did, to soothe his crying soul to sleep as he could not grasp the ageless, unfathomable depths of eternity. So this is definitely a story that goes very well with the Funeral Doom style of music that Atramentus is playing. Um, it's very scary and heavy and it just complements the narrative perfectly. The first song on here is From Tumultuous Heavens Descended Forth the Ceaseless Darkness. And when I first heard that song, it hits it hit me with what I believe is the scariest sound I've ever heard recorded in all of music. I mean, this is the biggest sounding low end piano chord. I, I think I think it's possible. I think that is possible on the piano because if you think of a standard piano, A is the lowest note and I'm pretty sure it's an A minor chord and it just stretches the entirety of the low end octaves on the piano, just slamming down super dissonant and super eerie. And that is one thing I love about this album. There is keyboards, organs, synthesizers on here. And that just really propels this album into this atmosphere that locks the listener in. And it's like watching a movie because it's half fairy tale narrative and half music. And as you as you follow along, there's lyrics, but there's also notes that 
um, they they progress the narrative while you're listening to the song. So it's something that's so visual at the same time. And I'm really curious to know how or where they recorded this piano because if you haven't heard it, definitely listen to it because wow, that piano is just an absolutely terrifying noise. I mean, it's giving me goosebumps to think about. It's just slamming down on the lowest octaves on the piano. And then after that, um, another piano melody creeps in and it's super, super dissonant. I really love the first song because it's got this like gothic and medieval element that the keyboards really, really um, bring out, which just, it goes super nicely with the whole fairy tale narrative, but the very dark fairy tale narrative. And later on in the song, uh, the organs kick in, which is another thing that just, you know, it, it gives such an image in the listener's mind of castles and medieval times and whatever all these mythical gods represent. And that song is definitely a very powerful opener. It's very long. I think it's uh, around the 16 minute mark, but what a way to start off that album. And Phil Tugas showcases his absolutely unreal vocals that you can hardly understand what he's saying even with the lyric sheet, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter because you get the narrative as you go along. And his vocals are a lot more atmospheric on this album. So it's definitely something that doesn't hinder the whole visual and experience of getting into the story and stuff like that. And uh, another thing I really like is on the fade out of the song, they do a really cool thing where all the instruments fade out and it's just the drums that are left. And it, it's a pretty slow progression, but like once everything else fades out and it's just the drums, you get to really hear the awesome production on this album. The drums are just drenched in reverb. The toms ring out so much and it's just everything done right for this kind of funeral doom metal that you need. And uh, another thing is uh, on both tracks, there's two tracks and one interlude. And on this one, specifically Phil Tugas does some high screams which go over really well, um, you know, matching that uh, tortured um, night wandering the eternal frozen landscape perpetually. Uh, you know, it just sounds tortured and miserable but also there are some clean sung slash chanted vocals, which go over really nicely, especially because Phil Tugas, at least it seems like when he sings the clean stuff, he has a really natural, like low baritone style voice, which just matches the down tune style of Funeral Doom that Atramentus is playing. And the next track is the interlude track and um, there's Side Autumn and Side Winter and that finishes off side autumn and um it's one of those tracks that's a lot more based in ambience and just kind of keyboard sounds but throughout the track if, if you follow along on the insert the story continues but it's just kind of a way to set up side winter which is the second song on here and it is another just breathtaking tune and i forgot to point out the artwork absolutely phenomenal is done by the painter Mariusz Lewandowski. Sorry for that bad pronunciation, but he just does breathtaking work. Absolutely phenomenal job on the artwork. And yeah, the third song is Perennial Voyage Across the Perpetual Plains of Crying Frost and Steel Eroding Blizzards. And that, oh, it says the time on here. That is a 23 minute track and Wow, is that really just brings the record to an emotional climax. I mean, it still has all the same elements of the first track, but it offers a bit of a different perspective. The keyboards are still there and they really take the lead a lot on, especially the second half of that track, which if I were to say my favorite thing about the album, it would probably be the keyboards and the piano, as well as I think the clean vocals went over super well. And th this is the track that really just wraps up the album, but it's done in a super epic and grand way. And it just matches the narrative. I mean, the story ends 
it doesn't really have an end actually it just you know the lone knight is forever cursed to walk this earth and i mean the use of imagery like to display how much time has gone on is it's truly a work of art i'm gonna find the sentence but um you know if, if you're trying to go for something this ambitious you have to really know something about writing or literature syntax or diction whatever it may be because i mean phil when he's writing these notes he's really using a lot of description um one sentence that comes to mind specifically yeah um to describe how much time has went by the quote like the unyielding scythe of time eroding mountain and stone carcophonex feasted upon the stars with unending gluttony and i mean if you just unpack that sentence it's like the night has been wandering so long for so many billions of years that the stars have begun to burn out and die. And he's wandering through the amount of time that it takes a star to go through its death, which is really a good way to put that in perspective. Like it's not enough to say he's been walking for eternity or, you know, and I'm, I'm half reviewing the narrative on here. Like it's an English class, which, I mean, I like doing that stuff, but anyway, the music just, it encompasses it nicely. Uh, there's a really catchy part on the piano, on the outro, but it's really, it's really sad and somber. And I was saying, even by Funeral Doom standards, actually it's pretty mid paced by Funeral Doom standards, but at the end there are some blast beats which close out the album, which is really refreshing just cause it gives it a little bit of variety. I mean. There doesn't have to be blast beats, of course. It's funeral doom, it's gonna be slow. But that burst of energy really just kind of bangs out the album in a in a really grand way. And that is about all I have to say for this album. I highly, highly recommend you check it out. And I'm gonna rate this a 10 out of 10, which is kind of funny because if anyone watched my last review, the Cryptic Shift album, I also gave a 10 out of 10. And I named it my album of the year, but I said there's one that is challenging that, and that would be this one. So the only two albums I've ever rated 10 out of 10 in these reviews are two from this year, which goes to show that at least in my eyes, 2020 has been an amazing, amazing year, at least in terms of musical quality. And I would say just go listen to this and buy it because if you buy it, you get the narrative, which I think is half the joy in listening to this album. It's scary, it's emotional, and it's beautiful all at the same time. So this is Atramentus Stygian, Hail True Quebec Funeral Steel. Thanks for watching.